Hello, I'm Sally Gunn, and today we're going to be reading the book Saving Fiona, the story of the world's most famous baby hippo. When I think of a hippopotamus, I think of huge creatures that live in Africa. Um, they live in the water, and they are dangerous to humans. I find out that there are two species of hippopotamus. The Nile hippo, which is this huge creature that I think of and which Fiona is, and also the pygmy hippo, which is a, there are very many fewer of them than there are of the Nile hippos. Our book today, Saving Fiona, is about this Nile hippopotamus, which was born and has grown up in a zoo in Cincinnati, Ohio. The book was written by Thane Maynard, director of the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, where Fiona lives. Because she was born prematurely, she required a lot of help and specialized medical care, similar to what a human baby born prematurely would need, around-the-clock care. She is the very first premature hippo raised by humans. Her caregiver said that her little ears reminded them of Shrek's ogre love, Fiona, and so that's why they named her that. Maybe someday you can go online and see videos of Fiona. She was born almost four years ago in 2017, and she weighed only 29 pounds. The word hippopotamus comes from a Greek word that means horse of the river. Saving Fiona, the story of the world's most famous baby hippo by Thane Maynard. This is Fiona. She is a baby hippopotamus, but not just any baby hippopotamus. She is the first premature hippopotamus to be raised by humans. She is a survivor, and this is her story. There had not been hippos at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden for 20 years. People really love hippos. Their big round bodies and storybook appeal made them the most requested animal at the zoo. When the zoo planned to build a new African animal habitat, making a space for the hippos was a top priority. By the way, you'll notice all the way through this book, instead of drawings or any other kind of artwork, there are photographs, and these photographs were taken by many people. One thing hippos need is water, lots and lots of water. The water in the 70,000 gallon hippo pool in Hippo Cove is 100% rainwater, collected and saved every time it rains in Cincinnati. To keep the water clear so visitors are always able to see the hippos from all sides, the zoo makes use of the biggest pool filter in town. The first residents of Hippo Cove were 17-year-old Bibi and 34-year-old Henry, these two hippos. They arrived in 2016. Bibi had only lived with female hippopotamuses. Henry was the first male hippo she had ever seen. Henry had lived with many hippos, male and female. He had even fathered some babies. Everyone hoped that Bibi and Henry would get along and have some babies of their own. Not long after the pair was introduced, there was good news. Bibi and Henry were going to be parents. Scientists from the zoo's research team conducted the world's first ultrasound on a Nile hippopotamus. Because hippos have a thick layer of fat to insulate them for their life in the water, nobody was sure if an ultrasound would work. But a scientist slid under Bibi's huge belly and sure enough, you could see a spinal cord and even little hippo feet. The zoo staff continued to monitor Bibi throughout her pregnancy. Soon, there would be a baby hippopotamus at the Cincinnati Zoo. But sometimes, things happen too soon. Bibi's caregivers noticed 
that she was acting as though she was going to give birth. She had no appetite. She was swimming continuously and doing barrel rolls. Her body showed signs of labor. They rushed to her area in the Hippo Cove where they got a big surprise. Even though Bibi wasn't due to give birth until March, lying there on the ground was the littlest hippo anyone had ever seen. It was January 24th, 2017. At only 29 pounds, the baby hippo was about the size of a heavy football. Hippos are normally three times that size at birth and very active. In the wild, hippos are born in the water and can climb right up onto their mom's back. They even nurse underwater. This little hippo had the entire team shocked. Being a preemie, the baby just lay there. She was too weak to stand and certainly couldn't climb. A first time mother, Bibi looked at the baby with mild curiosity. There was no time to waste. The zoo's care team jumped into action. They picked up the baby and started to warm her with thick blankets. Everyone had a lot of questions. What do we feed her? Should we put her in the water? How do we make her stronger? How would a hippo mom take care of a premature baby in the wild? These are all the things they thought about this little creature. Nobody had ever raised a premature hippo. If Fiona was going to survive, everybody would be taking care of her and would have to be learning everything one day at a time. A lot of science is like that. A brand new experience, everybody has to think about past experiences and then what do they have to do for the present situation. A team of specialized caregivers was assembled, including the zoo's hippo keepers, a nursery staff of baby animal experts, and an animal health team of veterinarians, veterinary technicians, and the zoo nutritionist. Team Fiona was committed to saving the baby hippo's life, whatever it took. After talking it over, they decided to name the female baby hippo Fiona after the lovable princess with the wiggly ears from the movie Shrek. The zoo decided to share Fiona's struggles with the world via social media. Everyone soon fell in love with the little hippo. They rooted for her and sent support and positive vibes her way when she needed them the most. Team Fiona grew and grew. Oh, look at all these photos of her. How her mouth opens wide. Them trying to feed her, being in the water. The team knew that someone had to stay with the baby around the clock, literally holding her to keep her warm. A special area in the hippo barn was set aside for the baby to live in until she began to grow. The building had a heated floor and the heat in the room was cranked up to 98 degrees to make sure she didn't get chilled. Can you imagine if your living room was 98 degrees? Even her little pool became a hot tub filled with water of nearly 100 degrees. The first dilemma was getting Fiona to nurse. As is the case with all infant mammals, it would be best for Fiona to drink her mother's milk. But Bibi is huge, over 3,100 pounds, and tiny Fiona couldn't reach her to nurse. The team found the biggest breast pump on the market, but that idea didn't work. So a scientist slid under Bibi again, just like they had when they first saw Fiona in an ultrasound and hand milked her like a cow. The team was able to get some milk. Fiona was able to drink a little of Bibi's milk, giving her important antibodies for her, from her mom. And the zoo's nutritionist sent milk samples off for analysis to the milk repository at the National Zoo in Washington, DC. They learned for the first time that hippo milk is much higher in protein 
and lower in fat than human milk. So every day a special formula was mixed up and heated for Fiona to drink. But it was difficult to keep Fiona interested in feeding. And sometimes she would have a difficult time breathing. You can imagine how much Fiona did not like the oxygen tube or cannula in her nose. The zoo's nursery keepers know that the keys to raising a healthy baby animal are making sure the baby gains weight and stays hydrated. At about one month old, Fiona wasn't looking so good. She didn't have much energy, she wasn't eating, and even worse, she wasn't keeping down what little food she did eat. It takes a village to raise a premature hippo. Someone on the zoo staff shared that when her own daughter was sick and needed fluids, her hospital called in a specialized vas vascular access team to find her tiny veins and her daughter recovered. So when the zoo reached out to the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they sent their special vascular access team right over to put a hippo IV into her. It took a couple of tries because Fiona pulled the first one out, but eventually the IV stayed in for a week and Fiona was finally well hydrated. She started gaining weight and becoming more active. Oh, look at her. There she is. Fiona had turned a corner. Fiona began putting on two to three pounds a day and graduated two pool sizes as she grew. Once she, was a, once she was a few months old, she began living in the area adjacent to her mother and father so that the family could begin bonding. At this stage in her young life, Fiona still spent much of her time with her keepers and other members of Team Fiona, who would swim with her, play with her to give her some exercise, and feed her bottles of specially prepared formula. It was the only way to keep her healthy. The team was encouraged by Fiona's progress, but at the same time, everyone was worried about the risks involved in reuniting her with Bibi and Henry. After all, the parents weighed over 7,000 pounds combined, and Fiona was still so little. Her caregivers and the zoo's mammal curator worked up a step-by-step -step plan for, for Fiona. She began by learning to push off the bottom of the big indoor pool, chaperoned by keepers in case she couldn't navigate the deeper water or get to the surface to breathe. Then Fiona started spending time with Bibi indoors, giving them a chance to get to know each other better without the risk of water. Fiona did amazing things with Bibi, such as exploring her mouth which made everybody a bit nervous, and Bibi was proving to be a great hippo mom. The world celebrated these milestones right along with Fiona's care team. People couldn't get enough of the videos and photos that the zoo shared via social media. They demanded a daily Fiona fix. The next big hurdle was the outdoor pool where the water is nine feet deep. Little Fiona was less than two feet tall. And even though hippos spend all day in the water, resting and staying cool, they can't actually swim. They are so dense, they would sink right to the bottom. Instead, they walk along the bottom of rivers and pools and propel their bodies to the water's surface to breathe. An adult hippo can hold its breath for about five minutes but Fiona's lungs were not developed enough to do that. So at first, Fiona would go out with her keepers, which was as much fun for them as it was for her. Hippos are built for a life in the water, and the keepers soon saw that Fiona was no exception. She loved the pool. Then came the big day everyone had looked forward to with a little sadness. 
When Fiona was about four months old, it was time to let her explore the big pool with Bibi. I don't know if you can see this picture, but there is Bibi and there is Fiona. This would mean the end to the daily swimming and contact with her keepers who had raised her since her unexpected beginning. Fiona did great with her mom and had fun in the pool, playing and bouncing around underwater every day. It was clear that her keepers missed her more than she missed them, which is a good thing since she will spend her life with hippos, not people. The grand finale was the family reunion when Henry, Bibi, and Fiona started spending time in the pool together. Fiona continued to play and be a very active little hippo by the time she was six months old and she weighed over 400 pounds. Sometimes Fiona settles down in the shallow end of her pool, staying cool while she takes a nap. Everyone at the Cincinnati Zoo agrees that we have learned a lot from Fiona. We feel like we are experts on hippo ultrasounds, hippo milk, and everything else you need to know to raise a premature baby hippo for the first time. But mostly, we learned that love carries the day and makes the impossible possible. Fiona taught us all to never give up. This book has a lot of information after that story, talking about where they come from. This dark yellow section is where Nile hippos live. This is the little Nile River. And this tiny little section here of light yellow is where pygmy hippos live. I hope that you can get a hold of a book like this or just go online and watch the videos of Fiona and her caregivers. This is a picture of the man who wrote the book with Fiona. Mr. Maynard is the director of the Cincinnati Zoo. I'm sure it was a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed this.